Throughout Marine Corps history, several men have become legends. Most of these were recipients of the Medal of Honor, or Commandants of the Marine Corps. However, the name Chesty Puller stands alone, and for good reason. How did a Marine who never received the Medal of Honor become the most famous Marine in history? How did Lieutenant General Lewis B. Puller earn five Navy Crosses and one Distinguished Service Cross, among many other awards? How did a man with a high school education, no college degree, become a three-star Marine Corps General? Hello, I'm Colin Heaton, former soldier, Marine Corps scout sniper, history professor, historian and book author, and we will answer these questions and other issues on this segment of Forgotten History. Lewis Burwell Chesty Puller was born on June 26, 1898 at West Point, Virginia, the third of four children born to Matthew M. Puller and Martha Richardson Lee. His family were one of the first settlers from England in 1621, and he was a distant cousin to U.S. Army General George S. Patton. In 1908, his father Matthew died and in the family's reduced circumstances, Lewis Puller was forced to aid in supporting his family at the age of 10. He continued on at school, but earned money selling crabs at the local waterfront amusement park, as well as working in a pulp mill. Puller wanted to join the army in 1916 and take part in the widely publicized punitive expedition to capture Mexican leader Pancho Villa. However, Puller was underage and his mother refused to consent to his enlistment. When war was declared with Germany at the start of World War I, Puller was 17 and he accepted an appointment to Virginia Military Institute as a state cadet, receiving financial assistance in return for later service. He was by all accounts a mediocre student and he went to the Summer Reserve Officer Training Corps camp in New York during the summer. Puller grew restless as he heard about the fighting in Europe and he was impressed with the U.S. Marines, who had made headlines around the world after the reported exploits of the 5th and 6th Marine regiments in Europe, and especially the operations at Belleau Wood. Puller left VMI in August 1918 and enlisted as a private in the U.S. Marine Corps. Completing basic training at Paris Island, South Carolina, Puller received an appointment to Officer Candidate School based upon his two years at VMI, his series commander's recommendation, and his test scores. Passing through the course at Quantico, Virginia, he was commissioned as a reserve second lieutenant on June 16, 1919. His life was altered during the post-war reduction in force from 73,000 down to 1,100 officers and 27,400 enlisted men following the war. He was put on inactive status 10 days later and given the rank of corporal. Frustrated, Puller rejoined the Marines on June 30, 1919 as an enlisted man with the rank of corporal. Assigned to Haiti, he served in the Gendarmerie de Haiti, which was under a treaty between the U.S. and Haiti. Puller served as a brevet lieutenant and aided in combating Keiko's rebels as one of the Gendarmerie of American officers, largely Marines, and Haitian enlisted personnel. While in Haiti, Puller served as adjutant to future Commandant Major Alexander Vandegrift. Puller received orders to deliver supplies to Mirabales and Los Cabos. These two small towns were located in a region where there was a significant presence of Keiko guerrillas under the command of Benoit Betraville, who was a high-ranking insurgent leader. This skirmish was Puller's first engagement in the occupation and showed his adeptness at aggressive action and effective leadership from the front. Puller and his force reached Mirabales and delivered the supplies. The next day, Puller made a 34-hour round trip to Las Cahobas to deliver the final supplies and then returned to Port-au-Prince. Puller used the locals as intelligence sources, and learning his enemy's methods, decided to set up nocturnal ambushes. A skirmish line towards their front and three Lewis guns on their flank, he attacked once he located a rebel camp. He successfully killed 17 rebels in a classic nighttime L-shaped ambush. Puller served on more than 40 operations, leading platoon-sized elements, basically writing the manual on night ambush tactics. His force killed over 200 insurgents and captured dozens of weapons. As a result, and with Vandegrift's support, after returning to the U.S. in March 1924, he was successful in regaining a regular commission as a second lieutenant. Over the next four years, Puller had many assignments that took him to the east coast to Pearl Harbor, 
In December 1928, he received orders to join a detachment of the Nicaraguan National Guard. Puller spent the next two years battling the local bandits. For his efforts in mid-1930, he was awarded the Navy Cross. Returning home in 1931, he completed the company officer's course before returning to Nicaragua. Puller remained there until October 1932, and he was awarded a second Navy Cross for his performance against the insurgents in a pitched battle. He had more combat time between Haiti and Nicaragua than any other company grade officer. In early 1933, Puller joined the Marine Detachment at the American Legation in Beijing, China. While there, he led the famed Horse Marines before departing to oversee the detachment aboard the cruiser USS Augusta. Fate would smile upon Puller as he came to know the Augusta's commander, Captain Chester W. Nimitz, the future admiral. That relationship would benefit him later on. In 1936, Puller was made an instructor at the basic school in Philadelphia. Puller was denied a seat at U.S. Army Command and General Staff College at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas because he did not have a bachelor's degree. After three years in the classroom teaching infantry tactics, he returned to the USS Augusta and he went ashore in 1940 with the 2nd Battalion, 4th Marines at Shanghai. On November 13, 1937, he married Virginia Montague Evans, whom he had met 10 years earlier. Together, they had three children, Virginia McCandlish Puller, born in 1938, and twins, Lewis Burwell Puller Jr. and Martha Lee Puller, born in 1944. In August 1941, Major Puller left China to take command of the 1st Battalion, 7th Marines at Camp Lejeune. Then the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor and the U.S. entered World War II. In the months that followed, Puller prepared his men for war and the battalion sailed to defend Samoa. Arriving in May 1942, his command remained in the islands through the summer until being ordered to join Major General Vandegrift's 1st Marine Division during the Battle of Guadalcanal. Coming ashore in September, his men quickly went into action along the Matinakao River. Coming under intense attack, Puller earned a bronze star when he signaled the destroyer, USS Monson, to aid in rescuing trapped American forces. In late October, Puller's battalion played a key role in defending Henderson Field during the Battle of Guadalcanal by holding back massive Japanese attacks, and Puller received a third Navy Cross. In a firefight on the night of October 24th to 25th, 1942, lasting about three hours, 1st Battalion, 7th Marines, and the 3rd Battalion, 164th Infantry Regiment of the Army sustained 70 casualties. The Japanese lost over 1,400 killed and the Americans held the airfield. Puller was wounded himself on November 8, 1942, suffering arm and leg wounds during a Japanese attack on his command post. His injuries were serious, requiring surgery, and command of 1-7 was temporarily assigned to Major John E. Weber of 3-7. Puller was released from the hospital and resumed command of his battalion on November 18th. One of his best Marines who secured the airfield, a former soldier, Staff Sergeant John Bassalone, received the Medal of Honor following Puller's personal recommendation. After the division left Guadalcanal, Lieutenant Colonel Puller was made executive officer of the 7th Marine Regiment. In this role, he took part in the Battle of Cape Gloucester in late 1943 and early 1944. Puller earned a fourth Navy Cross for his efforts in directing Marine units in attacks against the Japanese. On February 1, 1944, Puller was promoted to full colonel and later took command of the 1st Marine Regiment. In September 1944, he was given command of the 1st Marines for the assault on Peleliu. Given the toughest assignment to date, to seize Umarbrogel Ridge, the heart of the enemy's heavily fortified defensive positions. While successful in the attack, Puller lost more than half his men, bringing harsh criticism, much of it unjust or misplaced. He was considered effective, but somewhat ruthless in his attacks. His willingness to lead from the front softened much of that criticism. Finishing the campaign, Puller's men sailed for the Russell Islands in April before preparing for the Battle of Peleliu. During the summer of 1944, Puller's younger brother, Samuel D. Puller, the executive officer of the 4th Marine Regiment, was killed by an enemy sniper on Guam. With Peleliu secured, Puller returned to the U.S. in November to 
to lead the Infantry Training Regiment at Camp Lejeune. He was in this role when the war ended in 1945. In the years after World War II, Puller oversaw a variety of commands, including the 8th Reserve District and the Marine Barracks at Pearl Harbor. With the outbreak of the Korean War, Puller again took command of the 1st Marine Regiment. Preparing his men, he took part in General Douglas MacArthur's landings at Incheon in September 1950. For his efforts during the landings, Puller received the Silver Star and a second Legion of Merit. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross from the U.S. Army for Heroism in Action from November 29 to December 4, and his 5th Navy Cross for Heroism during December 5th through 10th, 1950 at the Battle of the Chosen Reservoir. It was during that battle that he said the famous line, quote, We've been looking for the enemy for some time now. We finally found him. We're surrounded. That simplifies things, end quote. Taking part in the advance into North Korea, Puller played a key role in the Battle of Chosen Reservoir in November and December, performing brilliantly against overwhelming numbers. Puller earned the Distinguished Service Cross from the U.S. Army and his 5th Navy Cross for the same action in that battle. Promoted to Brigadier General in January 1951, he briefly served as Assistant Commander of the 1st Marine Division before temporarily taking command the following month after the transfer of Major General O.P. Smith. He remained in this role until returning to the United States in May. Briefly leading the 3rd Marine Brigade at Camp Pendleton, Puller remained with the unit when it became the 3rd Marine Division in January 1952. Promoted to Major General in September 1953, he was given command of the 2nd Marine Division at Camp Lejeune the following July. As a result of his long service in tropical environments, Puller was plagued by decaying health. He had high blood pressure and relapsing malaria, which gave him a rheumatic heart, and he was forced to retire on November 1, 1955. One of the most decorated Marines in history, Puller won the nation's second highest decorations six times and received two legions of merit, a silver star and a bronze star, as well as the Purple Heart. Puller himself said he was uncertain how he came to be nicknamed Chesty. It may have been a reference to his big, thrust-out chest, Chesty in the Marines also means cocky. Despite not having the traditional formal education required of commissioned officers, let alone reaching field or flag rank, Chesty Puller's abilities and notoriety allowed him to excel regardless. Receiving a final promotion to Lieutenant General, Puller retired to Virginia, where he died after a series of strokes on October 11, 1971. His son, Louis B. Puller Jr., lost both legs and parts of both hands to a mine in Vietnam, serving as a platoon leader, earning the Silver Star and a Purple Heart. He won the Pulitzer Prize in 1992 for his autobiography, Fortunate Son, The Healing of a Vietnam Vet. He committed suicide in 1994. The USS Lewis B. Puller is the first purposely built expeditionary mobile base vessel, previously classified as a mobile landing platform, and then as an afloat forward staging base for the United States Navy, and the second ship to be named for the legendary Chesty Puller. We hope you enjoyed this segment of Forgotten History. Please click like and subscribe for free, and please stay tuned and be engaged and informed. Send us comments if you have questions or even show ideas, and we will respond to all requests and comments as soon as we can. Thank you.